go and we mock Brian Tochi as he comes in. Oh, here's, here's, here's a, we'll play a little game. When he, uh, when, when he walks in, we all yell, where the hell have you been? <laughs> Wait a minute, Robbie, who's the writer here? There's this guy, I'm sorry, you come up with the line. <laughs> no, wait, Leonardo's right here. All right, now, well, speaking we'll... of, speaking of, let me please introduce you first, just in case people have no idea who you are, which I doubt. But, shall we start with the young man on the stage? I guess, you might as well, I'm here. Make everyone, get off. everyone, huge round of applause, Mr. Robbie Riz. <laughs> And of course, the beautiful, wonderful. <laughs> Let's see if you get the pronunciation right. Oh God, no. Ah, pressure. Not test. Yeah, okay. okay, this She's is only use writer Todd Langan. Yeah! Yeah! yeah. yeah. Nice work. Sometimes, sometimes I do research, you know? I'm not leaving the middle for Brian. Yeah. Ah, that's right. We're taking it from you. I'm still going to hang out over here for when he does show up. But, um, so. <laughs> well, why don't you come up here until Brian does, and, you know. By the way, you know what? He stands. Cool. That's what he's late. Sorry. <laughs> By the way, this is what you really want to see. So hold on a second. First of all, the back of the jacket, too. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah. Ah! Is that a one? A movie one? Tour ja uh, uh. This is the original film crew jacket. Yeah. The very first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie. This jacket is 34 years old. <laughs> I got this in pre-production. Yeah, I have I have the ooze one. Do you have the denim one? I have the the ooze one. No, that's uh, similar. Oh, the ooze one. The, you know, the uh, embroidery on the ooze one is so elaborate on the back. Yeah. I've never worn it. <laughs> <laughs> but I have other reasons for not wearing that one, so we may get to that today. If you want to hear me bitch about movies. Can you hold up the jacket again, please? Oh, sure. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know, the... Uh, there's an a old English dance pop band called ABC, and the guy wears this gold this way, suit. Thank you. The suit gets applause, so you're, you know. Can't beat the jacket, right? Can't be, I know, I, yeah, I feel I should just leave the stage now. Well, let's start off by, let's talk a little bit about how you each got involved with this project in the beginning. Um, for me, it was, uh, it was in 1989, and I got a call from my agent. Uh, I had a vague awareness of what the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were. Ever seen the cartoon, ever read the comic books. Didn't, I might have played with a couple of the toys, but I'm not sure. Um, and I had no idea what they were shooting for. I still have a note sheet where I'm like, I'm writing notes about my agent call, and I was going like, is, is this gonna be a cartoon? Is it animated? And then she said, no, 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 Jim Henson is going to be involved. And I said, okay, I'll take this meeting. So I, uh, I took the meeting and, um, with Limelight, Limelight Productions, and uh, they told me what they were shooting for. They told me about the involvement of Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird, who had story approval. This becomes very important in later discussions with the script writing of this thing. Um, but they were under a tremendous time crunch for reasons that I won't get into here. And I had worked in television and I had written uh, uh, a number of uh, scripts in TV, which is on a conveyor belt and has to be done in a very timely fashion. I concentrated in comedy. They wanted to emphasize the comedy of it. And uh, I was hired to do the job. Now, the only missing part of the story is how did they determine to call my agent? And this goes back to serendipity, because during the longest, you've heard about the WA strike that's going on right now. So back in the day, in the late 80s, the longest WA, WGA, WA means Writers Guild of America, it's the Screenwriters Union. Uh, the longest strike they ever had occurred one week after I joined the Guild. <laughs> it was six months. But for me, it turned out to be a blessing because I got to meet people on the picket line I would have never gotten to meet otherwise. I'm gonna throw out a name here, kind of dropping a name, kind of a quiz. I met a guy named Bruce Joel Rubin. Does anybody recognize, Robbie recognizes the name. Bruce Joel Rubin would go on less than a year later to win the Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay for writing the movie Ghost, okay? So we became friends on the picket line 
And Bruce is such a nice person, something I would never do myself. He offered to read one of my scripts. So I had written a spec script on speculation during the strike. He read it. He gave it to the head of the motion picture department at Paramount Pictures, which was producing Ghost at the time, a woman by the name of Lindsay Duran, who produced Sense and Sensibility just a few years later. Uh, when the turtle people frantically started calling around town looking for a swing, we need somebody fast, and we need somebody cheap, and we need somebody like right now. Uh, she literally, this is back before digital, she literally. Oh my God! Where the hell have you been, Brian? Where the hell? Where the hell? I was right at the punchline of my story. Come join us, sir, Mr. Brian Tucci, everybody. Or as we refer to him, the late Brian Tucci. Um, by the way, no, no, leave the glasses on. That's so Hollywood. It's so, it's so Hollywood. Hollywood. I just came from California, so pardon me. Pardon my tardiness. <laughs> so, 30 seconds, I'll complete this story. So, Lindsay, uh, Lindsay Duran, head of the motion picture department at uh, Paramount Studios, had my spec script on her shelf in paper form. And when the turtle people uh, called and asked, she literally took my script down off the shelf and said, This guy. So, that's how I came to write the movie. And uh, so, uh, uh, if I may sure. uh, uh, ask you, you like, well, so. I, I always say about entertainment, it is uh, the embodiment of this equation when preparation meets opportunity. Also, the definition of luck, Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, and that a healthy dollop of that, I mean, there are so many of us on various departments on these movies and stuff. Yes. And there's ton, and once you reach a certain level, everybody's talented. Yes, and and not, but but for some reason there are there were also talented people who maybe worked fast and who who knew comedy and and yet don't forget cheap and and cheap. <laughs> but yours came down. I mean, have you ever looked back on the fortuitous nature of it and gone, how on earth? I have been to the Tibetan mountains and sat in the mountaintop <laughs> contemplating that very thing, Robbie. Yes, I'm the guy. Screenwriters will talk about this because there's more screenwriters than there are good screenwriting jobs. We talk about the raw probability of things and the odds are against you. Luck plays a role in everything. Certainly that. That's why I describe it as serendipity. But none more so than you guys. I mean, as much as screenwriters like to, can I say bitch? Yeah. Uh, actors have it much worse. The numbers are much, much worse for actors. It's like well, when, that's when because like, that's because nobody can write. No, no one actually. <laughs> no one. And and they're and, too kind. Keep it coming. No, no. And also, I believe um, writing is an exercise where you have to kind of go inside, and 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 so everything is happening here, and. To bring your brain down to a calm enough level to actually put all these things together, actors, if we blow a line, we can we can wing it. Yeah, we can wing it. Many times we do wing it. We can redo it. But what? Uh, but getting back, and I'm I'm so sorry. I'm a little bit tad bit tardy. Um, Let it go, so, Brian. We'll but what was so interesting is I and I don't know if you covered it. But there was somebody who initiated the Ninja Turtles. But when we were talking about talent, the talent of this writer rose to the top. And it went with his script. There was another one floating around, but it was his script that we did. This is my kryptonite, Brian. You can't compliment me too much. Yeah, I, just, <laughs> I shut down. You guys, too, you guys say outrageously nice things to me. And sometimes I have to go like, too much. But what, another, I have to ask you though, another thing that, that I find interesting, I, I've written screenplays as well. And matter of fact, I won the Hollywood uh, Screenplay Award uh, years ago on an on original screenplay. So I, I, I kind of understand the process. But what's interesting for, for, in regard to the Ninja Turtles, when you started putting it together, did the characters speak to you and a lot of times write themselves? No. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's kind of like an actorly way of looking at things. It's, it's, it's work. It's like, you know, it's, it's like it's, it's experience and it's work and it's sitting down and doing it. And I won't go into this whole story, but it's like 
There was also a severe time limit, especially on the first picture. Uh, I tell people just to give you a sense of how long it takes to write a screenplay, average is about six months. It could take up to a year, depending on how many people have input, how many people give notes and all that sort of thing. Six months is kind of standard uh, from start to finish. So for reasons we won't get into, there was a trip. They were gonna shut down pre-production on this picture and not make it unless they could get another script, which they could send to distributors to attract pre-production money so they could continue the development process of the Henson creature outfits. So I'm just gonna throw out the number. From dawn to dawn, from the moment I woke up in the morning to the moment that I went to sleep at night, I did nothing but write the script and I wrote the entire script in 10 days. Wow. Now, I mean, that's, that's quite a feat. It's an amazing, amazing feat. That, it is ridiculous. Yeah, no. But the thing that's the most, that's not the amazing part to me. That's the, no? right. the amazing part to me is this, and again, uh, a series of circumstances that were way, way different on the second picture. Uh, screen artists have an expression. I'm going to teach you this expression. These guys know about it. When you get a script, you go into production. Anytime there's a change to the script, they put in a different color, different color page to let you know when that change has occurred. By the time you start shooting a script, you have a rainbow colored script. So writers, and this never happens, uh, we have an expression called shooting the white pages, which means you basically shoot the first draft that the writer's, writer turns in. Again, not because of you know the T word or anything like that, because of the considerable time crunch they were under to start production, get this thing going, to amortize their costs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They basically shot the white pages for this first picture. We will contrast that at some other time with the way it was on the second picture, but it was night and day. Um, and I think that kind of speaks to your, like, your ability that you cranked out a finished movie on your first try. Well, I know there was editing. I'm not saying it was. Dude, I had written movies before. They just hadn't been produced, which, by the way, <laughs> is the norm in Hollywood. You have this huge pool of scripts that are written by people that are never paid for, a much smaller pool of scripts that are written which are paid for, and an infinitesimally small pool that have been written, paid for, and actually produced. I know people, I'm sure you guys do too, their entire, writers, friends, good writers, their entire career, and they have bought houses in Santa Barbara, raised a family, all that kind of stuff, written scripts their whole life, don't have a single produced credit because they get paid to write that script and it never gets produced. Or on the flip side, somebody might write a script, then it goes to the studio, and then there are all these executives who have no talent whatsoever, who need to kind of put input into the script and not knowing anything about writing, not knowing any, having zero talent truly, but they have to, they have to kind of validate their position in the studio. You right? to, I'm about to go into rage mode. There's, yeah. a, <laughs> there's, a, uh, th there's a, 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 a joke, I'll try to do it really quickly, <laughs> but Steven Spielberg dies, and he goes to heaven, <laughs> and meets St. Peter at the gate, and uh, Pete's showing him around, and he's like, so, uh, while you're here, uh, the maker was wondering if you maybe wanted to get involved with the project. And he's like, well, you know, I spent my whole life making movies. You know, you look, all right, well, who, who do you got to do the screenplay? He goes, well, we got Shakespeare. He goes, oh, is there William Shakespeare? He's like, yeah, William Shakespeare wants to do the script. Uh oh, well, that's pretty good. Uh, set designer? Uh, oh, yeah, it's Michelangelo. What, you mean like the paint, like the sculptor? The, Michelangelo, yeah, okay. And so they go down this list, and finally you get to the end, and, uh, you know, uh, Spielberg goes, okay, well, who do you have for a leading lady? And Peter goes, all right, so this is the deal. God has this girlfriend. <laughs> so, and, and this is, this is, the, these are the people that are not the creative side of this thing. These are those people who are like, I want to get my mitts on it just so I can, if the thing does well, I can tell everybody that, you know, you know that line? That's me. And yeah. you guys are really in the business. Yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> well, not only that's that, accurate. Well, 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 not only that, they also have, as Todd was saying, you know, there are some people whose scripts have never been fully produced or whatever, but they've earned enough money from, from 
you know, sales. optioning sales. But there are other writers who literally may write a few pages in an existing script, but they will get paid some $3 million, $5 million, just because they have a name. Adding just a few things to an existing script that was otherwise pretty darn good. You know, it, but that's what the studio, studio heads hire these guys because they're validating their, again, their job by saying, well, he had this hit and he had this hit. I put him in, it's not my fault, it's his fault. Look, you know, it's, I'm gonna make you guys honorary writers. As a, <laughs> you're, you're bitching for me, I love right, it. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I, I, this is, uh, as a, you know, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for years, was the highest grossing independent movie uh, up until that point. And I forget who knocked it off, huh? It was 10 years. It was 10 years? Yeah. All right, so for 10 years, right? Now, until my uh, Greek wedding. I think, I, I, th I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> what we, which is a good one. I like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, the whole thing with the, I, 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 I've known Greek people yeah. <laughs> who have actually said if you put olive oil on your hair, yeah. It won't fall out. Okay. I love that. I think okay. that's the greatest thing ever. <laughs> but, uh, but as an independent film, uh, isn't it funny how much, f on a certain level, freedom you have, except for the fact that you have no money or time? Yeah. Like, it, th there, is a, th there is a, you can always have two equation out there. It's, uh, what is it? You can always have two. Uh, cheaper, uh, uh, the cheap, fast, and good rule. Okay, you can have it cheap and fast, but it won't be good. You can have it cheap and good, but it won't be fast. So this is the, sh the, the you're shaking hands with the devil every time you go into one of these things. Because if it's a crap ton of money, that means there's a crap ton of people that want to put their mitts on it. If it's a very small production, there's lesser mints, but there's also no money and, and you have no time in which to get it done. I, I don't know about a lot of you, but initially... Uh, and also, I, wait, really quick, is this too, all too dry and boring? <laughs> all right, good. All right. This is all kind right. of the behind yeah, the scenes. Yeah, because we're like, yeah. hey, let's talk screenwriting. <laughs> well, you know, I had no idea what Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were. I, didn't, I wasn't aware that there was a comic book series by Eastman and Laird and, and then there was this cartoon that started. And so what happened is when they ultimately were able to put the production together, they hired the team, you know, took Todd's script and were running with it, but they had hired another cast. And I was not part of that original cast. Were you part of the original cast? For the, the casting of the movie? Yeah. I have no idea. Okay. Yeah. Because Maybe. they hired somebody for Leonardo. I'm Leonardo, by the way. <laughs> and, and they fired him. And yeah, <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> you would work in Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> that predatory attitude. Yeah. <laughs> and then they hired another guy. And then they fired him. <laughs> and then I, I came available, and just by luck, somebody said, you know, there's this guy, Brian Tochi. He might be kind of good for it. So they contacted my agent. And they said, you know, would he be interested in this thing? And I had no idea what a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle was. So they explained, well, these little turtles are in the, and, and they're in the sewer, and this ooze comes all over them, they start growing, they become these, these badass karate guys. And I go, yeah, I think I could do it. <laughs> and thank goodness um, they didn't fire me. Because as, as, as Todd was saying, Robbie was saying, the first weekend, I, again, I had no idea what Ninja Turtles were. I didn't know the, the, the groundswell and the enthusiasm of turtles. But the first weekend was the highest grossing independent film in all of film history. The first weekend. And it just kept going from there to, you know, almost infinity. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, Thank you so well, much. Here's, here's a factoid that makes my head explode. Okay, the movie made hundred over, you know, north of $150 million. Which is this dollars now. This is 1990, which is astronomically And high. those were kid ticket prices, which are half. So, so it was little it was kids a, coming back at if it was price. a If it was a grown-up movie, it would have grossed twice that. Well, half of those might have been me. Yeah, <laughs> I, I got relatives too. 
<laughs> but yeah, I mean that's a that's a really significant uh, that's a really significant number. I mean, 180 million for the time is something. Well, that's 360 million back then. That's like almost like a billion dollars in today money. Did I mention how much I got paid to write that script? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna throw the number out at you. Right, I'm gonna tell you the number. Uh, wow. wow, to write the original Teenage Mutant, the 150 million. Is it? I got paid thirty-eight thousand dollars. Oh my gosh! Uh, well, you you made uh, thirty-six thousand more than I did. <laughs> is that, yeah, is that true? You, yeah, right. it's a two thousand dollar job. Telling this story me. when Robbie's here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's great. I'm I not, know I'm, that. And also, it's a you know the, the different metrics for how that business works. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah I mean, uh, on all three movies, they actually got us fairly. Rather cheap. I want to ask you about that in a second. But yeah. Just, just to let and you. I'm totally good with it. You know, I mean, I got to do the job. I'm, I'm right totally on. good for it too because it was the second movie that didn't come quite so cheap. And I also, I had participation in the movie, so that also. Did you really? Uh, <laughs> nice. That's what you want is participation. <laughs> but uh, why such an odd number? It's because that was the Writers Guild minimum at oh, the time wow. for what you had to pay. Anybody writing a screenplay, motion picture screen. But the question I, I wanted to ask you two guys, because I didn't know that, I did get to see some of the, the voiceover work in the later stages, like with Kevin Clash and things like that. You guys, unfortunately, I never got to see. I would have loved to have been there. Again, there were reasons that I got invited into the post production process, which we won't get into here. But so you're in the booth, like the first movie, just the first movie, both of you. How long did you actually spend recording your part? Was it was it a week? Was it was two I was, days? I, I, was I, I think I did the first one in four days. Yeah, that's what got four days. <laughs> really? <laughs> I came back a couple times. Oh, it's so because yeah. you're always late. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to say Todd. Well, well to say Todd. <laughs> no, was it was it about the same order of magnitude or what? No, because I, I came. I was. Uh, Couple of weeks, really? Was, yeah, and, and there were different things and some stuff shot. And I came it, in. It wasn't. Movie. It was like take one thirty. Was it? No. no? Okay. And didn't Rob? Didn't we work in in tandem with each other? Like, or was it the later ones? Uh, Robbie and I were the only ones that did all three in. original Ninja Turtle movies. Um, right. uh, but I don't recall in the first one. Did we also have group session stuff? I don't think we ever did, did we? Really? I don't remember. I don't think so. As it was I a remember, while ago. It was a, it as was I remember, a, it's, it's, it was all one at a time. Oh. Because I remember feeling very lonely. Ah. Uh, <laughs> but at some point, on second, the second one and the third one, though, we did do. Did we? Yes, we did. I, you know. I was a, Corey I, Feldman was I was, in, I was in my late time. 20s and, you know, <laughs> beer existed. Yeah, yeah. So... <laughs> But and Corey, besides, we don't talk about the third picture. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, the third movie, uh, I, for, uh, you know, I, I compare the turtle, that trilogy, to the original Planet of the Apes series, because the first one's really great, and then by the time they get to the last of that run of Planet of the Apes movies, which is Battle for the Planet of the Apes, it's like four apes and a school bus. It's like... <laughs> They spent like no money, like it seemed like they just gave up on the turtles for the third movie. They were just like, uh, we don't have to put anything turtley in it. You can badmouth the third. I, I was offered the third picture. I, I turned it down. But so. but it's my it's my favorite because the suits sucked. And the, <laughs> no no let me let me clarify. Uh, because the suits didn't work very well, there was a lot of errant lip flaps, as we would call them. <laughs> and so whoever was running the session would go, can you fix that? You know? And so there's a ton of ad libs yeah. that I got to yeah, do on good. the third one. So I'm like, I love the third movie because look at me be creative. Yeah. You know that? See that line? See that line? That's, that's mine. Me. That's mine. That's, that's what I'm that say. guy. That's a director say. That's Writers what love that's it mine, when actors mine. do that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys don't get enough credit. You have to start taking it. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's true. That's true. <laughs> All right, well, we don't want to keep you here forever because we want to make sure that you guys get back to your booths. No, yes, we do. <laughs> well, Who briefs you, Dan? That's great. I got to talk with these guys. Hello. I'm, I'm Brian. Hi, Brian. Hi, it's nice to finally meet you. Hi, Danica. <laughs> Brian's a hugger, by the so, way. I'm, I'm a hugger. Um, so I know that the important question on everyone's mind, 
How do you feel about ninja rap? <laughs> We're still talking about it. <laughs> yeah. Right? Is that We're good? still talking about it. I mean, it's. Uh, it I'm on the exists. album. Are you on the well, album? Actually, he's a uh, that second one, uh, or that that song. Uh, you know, I'm a fan of uh, uh, one of these uh, uh, channels uh, where they they do film, uh, you know, uh, criticism by you know making fun of the movie. And somebody pointed out that like in the first Spider-Man movie, Macy Gray is doing a song in it. And she had an okay career, but she's hardly like massive at this point. She's really kind of a time capsule of the yeah. moment. Turtles 2, it's the same deal, right? Like Vanilla Ice is coming off of this really hot record and they're like, well, obviously he's gonna be around forever. <laughs> so they, so they, right? So they put that song, they put him in the thing and now it really kind of makes Turtles 2, you could just go, 90s movie, you know, and like it goes, it goes right to it. So, yeah, it's, how awesome is that? And we're still talking about. It. Yeah. However, I it did remember. not make its money back. Oh no. I get, yeah. I the, the 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 rap song of Vanilla Ice because I get statements every quarter from the record company because I'm in that album. <laughs> and and they still say they don't owe any residuals or any any percentage because they're still trying to recoup the money from recording that, which is kind of an interesting thing. I think it's a personal, uh, personally, I think it's a, a, a capitalistic glitch yeah, yeah. perpetrated upon upon the talent. Well, I mean, <laughs> the, the, the record business very much has yes. always been about, oh, yes. we're not paying you any money. Oh, yeah. yeah. Movie business, too. Yeah. The movie business, too, they try and just... Yeah. Deal well, the thing, the, the funny, th I find this amusing about the entertainment business is the people who do that almost are doing it because they know they can't do what we do. Right. Amen. And 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 I think there is a a certain level of, you know, that that side of you they know, the started off as that. actors. A lot of these executives started <laughs> off as actors. Who couldn't make it as right. actors? Sure. And as Todd said, Hitler, that's a really was, Hitler hard... wanted to be a painter, and, and look what he did. <laughs> <laughs> he sure did. <laughs> I'm still stuck on the intro. I'm sorry. Yeah, that... <laughs> By the way, Danica, th thanks for bringing that here. Before we proceed here, let me, let me just. <laughs> oh, no. Did you write it? I wrote a song for the second movie called Ninja Rap. You wrote Ninja Rap? Oh. Awesome. I got paid. And I have absolutely nothing to do with Go Ninja, Go Ninja, Go. I do a whole bit, which we won't do here. Come see it at my table about what happened when Vanilla Ice got hired onto the second oh movie. Oh, my God. Like, I want to hear that no, story. No, 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 it takes too long. Wow, that's an interesting <laughs> story. But I will I'll suffice it to say, I've written, I, I, I was heavily into music, not as much as you, but in my school years, I was very much into music. I wrote a rap song for the second picture called Ninja Rap. Lyrics, music, the whole bit, put it in the script. It actually related to what was happening in the script. Can you imagine that? It actually had, it, it actually had relevance to the plot. And it took place in the thing and all, all this kind of stuff. And then, you know, uh, uh, Ben Winkle came on board, Vanilla Ice, and that, um, it all went away. Wait, wait, no, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. But, okay, this is a very, very important question. Okay. Is the demo of that song out there and available somewhere? <laughs> no, it's what are you talking about? Never recorded. Have you? Dude. Not, have you? Never but you must have a they, demo. You said they, you had no, music. Dude, and... I don't own it. They paid me off. They paid me because, oh, because of legal, legal, so it's for legal reasons. Because oh, once, once they got the because you should post that. You should just post it anyway. Yeah, we're we're fighting the chips fall where they fall. You're I mean, listening to all this inside stuff. Yeah. I, this is news. I think I should get like uh, I should get vanilla ice. Post it and let the, <laughs> let the let the lawsuits. What's the worst they can do to you? Come on, what, you can't get blood from a away stone. Everything I've earned in my yeah, right. entire life, <laughs> <laughs> plus the next forty years. Check in. Check in. Hey, you want in? You want in? <laughs> you want co-counsel, dude? <laughs> I'm already intimately familiar with the legal department of Warner Brothers. I, I, I want nothing more. I want nothing more.
But yeah, no, the whole Ninja Rap thing is a long story. <laughs> On, on that very, note, we should make sure that we go go back to Todd's table. And yeah, ask I was. All about we're it. not sitting next to each other, sadly. I would love no. to hear yeah. that. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> Complain to the organizers. Yeah, no, no. He's in the writers' scattered area. around. Now you have a reason for being where you are because Brian was in Revenge of the Nerds, of course, and you're sort of like yeah. you're you're doubling up with Tim, Timothy. Yeah, Bus Tim Bus. Uh, so. I don't know if anybody has heard of a movie called Revenge of the Nerds. We'll be talking about it tomorrow. Uh, we'll, oh. we'll be. We'll, <laughs> Oh, anyway, I happen to be in that too, so I'm sitting next to one of my co-stars in Revenge of the Nerds. It's your but, fault for having intersecting uh, it's artists. Your, yeah, franchises. Yeah, don't blame us. The police academies too. <laughs> I just like watching Brian work. I did get to go like side by side with Brian one convention. It's like I try to be the nicest guy at every convention, but the guy out nicest me. Stop it, Brian! Stop it! <laughs> yeah, I, I've, I've been saying this weekend. Brian Tochi is the human embodiment of a hug. Aww. Yeah. Yeah. But he comes late. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really weird. But he comes late because I'm hugging on my way in. <laughs> Uh, we should go ahead and wrap it up, actually. Oh, he's a Q&A. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Was that it? Was that a double entendre? Before we go, wrap, does anyone have a question? It up. Oh, yeah. Question. Got to be so fast, y'all. We got another one coming in. Dave Tracks. Dave Tracks. I have a friend who told me that uh, some of the actors got to do cameos in the movie. And I was just wondering if you guys know anything about the cameos? First, uh, the the that cameos. was the one, some of the turtles that were in the suits, yeah. like... Ken Scott was a, uh, had a foot soldier, and, and he did some other things. Ernie Reyes Jr., well, he was a keynote pizza boy. There were, I didn't do any no, cameo. Man. Did anybody here? No, but you're right, there was cameos. The most, probably the most uh, visible one, there's two very visible ones in the first picture. Uh, Michelin Sisti, it's a person, All right, Michelin, who played yeah. Michelangelo in the suit, uh, was the pizza delivery guy at the beginning of the first picture. And Josh Pies or Pays? Pays. This is how connected I am. To the it depends Josh on if he's Pays. here or not. Who played Raphael was the guy in the back of the taxi cab when Raphael bounds over the front of the taxi cab and he goes, what was that? And he goes, it looks sort of like a big twiddle. <laughs> in a trench coat. You're going to LaGuardia, right? That was Josh Pays so and Raphael in the back of the taxi. So. I think we got time for, let's do two Thanks more. Thanks for the question. Real quick. All of them. All of them. Uh, You're talking to the guy who wrote a lot of right answers. So, yeah. <laughs> All of them. But Go you know ahead. what? Kind of the general, come on, the dude, is kind of, you know, a kind of a favorite for all. Yeah. Mine is, is, God, I love being a turtle! Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, there you Shall go. Shall I tell a story? Shall yeah. I tell a story? So, so, the guys in the suits recorded their own dialogue on the set. Uh, except for Josh, who, uh, who played um, Raphael, they were all cast afterwards with each of them. And so there's a trailer online before the picture was completely cut and ready for release, where you can hear that line being spoken by the guy who's not Robbie Brist, okay? You should play that and play it side by side with Robbie Brist's take. And as a writer, it really did teach me the value of having the right voice actor, a good voice actor in that role. It's very kind of it's, But it's true. I, t I don't just tell the story because you're up on stage with me, although that helps. Um, <laughs> I tell other people that too. It's true. Now this Robbie Riss guy is a really talented yeah. guy. I've known him since I was like... See? Yeah. See? Now was you're getting it, dude. <laughs> yeah. I've known him since I was this high. Seriously. What the guy's about, what about Brian? He's such a talent, truly. Anything for Brian? Do I, no, but you kidding? I'm coming up blind. No, no, but you no, no. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, My Brian. favorite thing about Brian, by the way, and we'll get back to the question, because I'm... It's when he's not here. No. <laughs> <laughs> My franchise, besides the Turtles, is I'm old enough to have been around for the original uh, Star Trek. So Star Trek is my franchise. You, a lot of you are probably aware of this. Brian was on the bridge of the original Enterprise shooting an episode of the original series with Captain Kirk in the episode And the Children Shall Lead. This man was in the original Star Trek and the next generation. So that's my favorite fun fact about Brian Tochi. So there's my compliment. 
Oh, 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 Right? How often in your life do you wake up and go, you know what? I think a sentence I'm going to say today is going to have the words spiky, human, and boulder in them. Yeah. Uh, I, I love this job for that. I did a co commercial in the 90s, uh, and I, I, I came home, and, and the person I was dating at the time was like, so how was work today? And I went, I, I was an ice cube. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's a great job. Can we get a human expansion? What? Expansion? I didn't hear that. Expansion jutsu? Oh, God. No, I did the one. I can't. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. so, I wore that shirt. What I hate I to like do it. this, like but we got to wrap it up. So Come say hello to us at our table. Yes, we yeah. love, it. We love to talk to you. Here. Come say hello. We love talking to people. I, can, I don't know if you can tell. I think they like to talk. So, one more huge round of applause. Robbie Mills! Yes.